Welcome to the Procreate Dreams tutorial where I will guide you on how to use Procreate Dreams for the very first time and create your first animation. And this is what we're going to create in our very first animation. So let's get started by creating a brand new project. To do this inside of the project file here, this is called the theater where all your movies are stored. You can go and hit the plus in the top right corner. Similarly, kind of like in Procreate. Now here you have a lot of different options. You can scroll through all the different screen sizes. If you want to change anything, you can hit the three buttons here. You can also tap on here to change kind of like the size, but you can also change the size later on. What we're going to start with is here this wide screen and we're going to hit here empty. This will automatically open up our new project. So once you're ready, let's tap on empty to open our new Procreate Dreams project. Inside of the project, we have a couple of things. We have the stage. This is where our action is going to happen, where we see what we're animating. And we have the timeline. The timeline is kind of like an editing app where you have all your different clips and you can stack them on top. And so this works a little bit differently than layers inside or similarly like layers inside of Procreate. Now, to get started right in here, we're going to start by hitting the plus on the side. You'll see all the different buttons being used throughout this video and this tutorial. So here we're starting off to create a new project and we're tapping on the plus and then tap on track. This will open up a brand new track on the bottom. And inside of that track, we can get started and start by drawing something. So for example, we can start here hitting the draw and paint tool and this will open up this drawing interface. Whenever I'm drawing something in here, now I don't see it because I'm using white, but if I tap back and I select here the red color, I draw in a circle, for example, right here. This is a bad circle, but who cares? It will immediately create a still frame that prolongs throughout the clip, so throughout the timeline. So all the way from where my playhead is, this is where I can go and go through the animation. And you can see here, I have about two seconds. Um, this is not that much, but this is where I'm at. And so I can play this back by hitting the play button. Now, since this is all one frame, it's going to be the same throughout the entire film. But I can go also and draw something frame by frame. And to do that, well, let's undo this. Simply use your two fingers, kind of like in Procreate as well, just two fingers to undo and you're back to where we started. You have this little here handle in the middle of the screen and you can, inside of this paint and draw module, you can drag this down and enter the flipbook. Inside of the flipbook, you can start animating and you can see here, these are all these different frames and I can actually also position this here. Sometimes it's actually easier to have this on the left side and I can start drawing here a beautiful little character. So just like this. Now this character, well, he can move and so I'm can, I can go to the next frame and right now I don't see where he went. So to change that, what we're going to do, we're going to turn on onion skins. Onion skins, you'll find them here in the time code. So this is where you know exactly where in the movie you are. Just by pressing there, you get into the stage options. So you can see now you're hearing a lot of new things right from the bat, but I just wanna take you through a little process so that we get along. So inside of the stage options, you can here turn on show onion skins and also edit onion skins to see them how many frames before, behind, this will give you a reference to where your previous drawing was right here. So right here in red, this is my previous drawing. Now it's in purple. And I can kind of like say here, just by changing a little bit of the inclination, he is starting to turn around right over here. And then kind of like going further, he stays here, but he has his arm behind and he kind of turns around. And now if I go back, you can see kind of like he moves from one side to the other. And if I go back here, I can also just play that back and I see every individual frame. Now, once you're zooming in in here, a really great tip is to use three fingers. So three fingers slide to the right or to the left to kind of like maximize the scene or here to kind of like make this greater or smaller, depending on what you want. So this time is kind of like this doesn't really work here. So here you can kind of like expand and zoom this a little bit better. Three fingers. This is your quick gesture to know. All right, let's go back and let's animate something. So I'm going to select all of these clips. This is one of the last buttons that I'll show you right now. So here, selecting all of these clips and then I can hold down and I can either group them or just delete the content. This way I have this gone. Now I want to animate an object coming into the scene and then jumping out. 
So how do we do this? Well, we can actually import a lot of things from here photos. So I'll just slide in here and I'll grab a photo. So going to my albums, I will go to a specific album here that I had for the challenge. This is this one here. And I want to import this Fanta bottle. Now, I don't want to import the entire Fanta bottle because it has a white background. So I'm just going to tap and hold here, boom. It selected this as an object. And if I keep on holding this and then drag that in, it will immediately drag that in as a clip. And you can see from the playhead moment on to the end, it's now an entire clip. So this is great. This is all I need for now. And let's move this out of the frame. So here I can kind of like move this back. And now the bottle is in here, but I don't want to be here. So in Procreate, usually you would look for the transform tool. Now this is a little bit different. So let's unturn or turn off here the timeline edit tool and tap on the object. Now you have all these little four nods right here and you can pull on those nods. You can either pull on the sides. This will stretch it um, both in the opposite, like upwards and downwards, stretch it or squish it. And what I want to do is I want to scale it. So again, here, tap on one nod and just scale that. Now it immediately scales it from the center. This is because we have an anchor point. An anchor point is where from it's going to rotate or change anything. We're going to change that in a minute, but right now, all I want to do is to position the bottle here. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller and then position it right about here. So about the center, I think if you can hold down here, position that a little bit longer, there we go. You can actually, by holding down a finger, you can select where it's going to magnetically be positioned. So this here, perfectly at the center. Now, just playing this back doesn't do anything. So we want to add movement. This is what animation is really all about. And to add movement, Procreate Dreams has a brand new feature, which is called keyframing. Keyframing is so great, makes your life so much easier. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Procreate, but in Procreate, what you have to do is you have to import an object, duplicate the image, and then move it around. In Procreate Dreams, however, what you can do is say like, all right, one second, this is here, the position, and I can tap on the playhead. This will give me a couple of options, for example, move, filter, edit. Um, here you can split, for example, the clip, but I want to have this move in, and this is the position where we're starting in from. So here, tap on move, and then tap on move and scale. Move and scale is kind of like moving it around, rotating, all these things. Uh, you can actually see all the different things that it does move in a minute. But first up, here we have the first anchor point. So this is a keyframe, so we kind of like lock this in the position where it is. Now I'm going back straight to the beginning. Well, just accidentally press on it. And we have a second timeline track. This timeline track here just at the bottom, I'm not sure if you're seeing this very well, but you have a second timeline track, which is the keyframe track. So this is where all your keyframes are going to be stored. The more keyframes you have, for example, if you add opacity, they will all show up in here or maybe even below. So I'm going back to the beginning, tap that again, and then I'm going to move this all the way back here. And since I want it to be straight here, boom, beautiful position. So what just happened? I just positioned it here. So what now? Well, Procreate will actually remember this is the starting point. Here is the second point and it will create all the frames in between. So if I play this back, you can see, oh, this is what's happening. Now, here's something fun. Just knowing that this movement is now created by itself is great, but we can play around with it a little bit more just by adding a couple more things. For example, we can add kind of like how fast it's moving. Is it moving in a constant way, linear, or is it moving with a ease in or ease out or both? So to do that, to ac access that actually, you see you have that timeline. If I actually hold down on that timeline, I can select all the different easings here, set all easings to linear, ease in, ease out. So if I, for example, change it to linear, you will see the bottle moves just in a perfect constant speed, constantly from the speed. Like if I move this out here to two seconds, it will move just half the speed. So this is not great. I just wanted to move it back here. That is great. And what I want to do actually is set all easings to here, um, actually ease in and ease out. Now this will mean that it will slowly come in here and then kind of like speed up. And since I want to have that speed up really fast, what I will do is actually, uh, you can move this back 
here for a second. You can adjust that, move this out as well, and then kind of like go back here and not move this here, but here, move this out, double the size, and then again, bring this back about to one second here. And that means that here it's at its fastest pace and it will come in, boom, just like that. Perfect. I can actually also drag this out or change that. Here, these are kind of like different options you can do, but here this is perfect. So it comes in and I can also just shorten this clip here so that it actually doesn't come in and it just appears perfectly like this. That's fine. It just comes in here and then lands in this spot. That's the first move. The second move is I want it to move a little bit kind of like tilt because it's speeding in. And so I want a little tilt at the end kind of like because it's stopping, it's almost tilting over right before it may be crashing down. So I can add a second move. So in here, I can also just tap um, another thing. Actually, let me quickly move you. Now we've just learned how to use keyframes, but this is kind of like where I often do my first mistake and I've learned a lot from this is to animate on top of our drawing. This is our immediately drawn. I want to do something very special at the end and I'll show you why it's so important to do this and why we need to go back because we don't want to add more of those keyframes before we, you'll see the point. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to undo here all these keyframes. We know now how to do them and you'll see just how to do that again. But let's go back. Let's here go back to the timeline edit tool and select here just by dragging over. Now it's all in red, you can select that. I know you can also just tap that, but there is a feature that is important. Hold that down and group this drawing. Grouping is going to be a feature that you need to use or utilize a lot inside of Procreate Dreams for a couple of specific reasons. You don't want to add keyframes to your object. You want to add keyframes to a group. Very essential, please memorize this. So inside here, inside of the group, now we can add the movement. So second one here, we can add a keyframe. This is the end movement. I'm going to go out again here, add another one, and now just move this out. Just put this out right here. This is going to be fine. And I'm going to change here all these easings to ease out. So it will slowly come inside here. So you can see this, perfect, just like that. This is great. Now we can open the group here by just selecting down this arrow key and just by the name you have this arrow key and you can select down and now you see the object and image. We're going to do one more thing again, timeline edit, and we're going to select this one again and then hit group. So we have here a group that is moving in and it's going around. So again, I just missed that. Group this again and then you can let go of the timeline edit tool and now let's go down on the second one. So the second group here is moving with it. And as it's slowing down here, I want it to start tilting all the way to the point where it stops right here. So this is kind of like where it stops and then it falls down. So let's add a keyframe um, right here. This is a couple frames after, so that's great. Move. And then let's add a keyframe right here. This is where it's coming in. And then here it's also from this position, it's almost stopping and so every time if your if your playhead is showing like this little tutorial or like this little clipboard here then you don't want to go you go want to go one line down onto this where you see the move um symbol right here and so this position i'm going to the center and then here i'm going to change the anchor point of this object right here so here tapping on the object tapping on the three dots and tap on edit anchor now the edit anchor, you'll see this is a little cross around, you barely see it. And I'm going to position it right down here at the bottom of this bottle where this whole bottle will start to rotate on. You can see this now, I'm just hitting here the done, perfect. And then I can select here a nod, so any nod will actually do. And then you can kind of like rotate this. So here on this mark, I'll say like this is almost where it rotates, so here, Ah, this is maybe a little bit too late. Let's say like this. Yeah, that looks great. So it's stopping and then it comes slowly back down. Maybe this is too far. This is too far. Let's adjust that. So the great thing is I can play this back and just see how it feels. So let's go back to the beginning 
here and let's play it back. All right, that's not too bad. I'm actually going to go here and select this one. This is the keyframe for the rotation and I'm moving this a little bit further down. So it's almost stopping right here and then a couple of frames here, making a little bit same distance. So here coming down slowly, maybe even slower. Let's play that back. Uh, that's too slow. Let's move that in a little bit. Better. Perfect. All right, that's great for me. Uh, so this is the bottle flipping around, going down. Great job right here. And so we have now something which is great. And the reason why we're doing this like this is that now I can actually swap out here this drawing. So I created a whole movement with an object. But the cool thing is now I can here select this Pringles can, for example. So let's select the Pringles can. I can tap down here, import this, and here import this into my group where the drawing is. And so here I can go down, perfect. And I'm just going to tap on top here. If the onion skins are bothering you, just hide onion skins, move this out of the way here, tap on it, scale this a little bit, just like that. That looks great. And voila. And so here, perfect. Now you see, I didn't have to animate this movement and motion anymore. That's because we worked in groups and this is why it's so important to work in groups whenever you're animating something. And now the coolest thing is we're going further to this point and this is where the bottle now squishes down. So let me just hide this. Let's go in here. Perfect. Let's add a movement here onto the movement keyframe track and then I'm going to have that squish down. Actually move this out a little bit here. Squish down maybe even a little bit further down here. And so I can here on this bottle, move this a little bit up, move this a little bit down. But now the problem is, all right, this is squishing on the wrong end. So what I'm going to do here is actually here, edit anchor. I'm going to add that at the bottom. And now if I tap done and squish this, looks a lot better. So here, squishing down, and then it's jumping out and up. So here we're adding another element. So we're squishing this back. If, for example, I, I don't want it to be squished anymore, so I have no idea exactly how much I need to stretch that. What I can do here, this is actually great. Let's undo this button here. I can go back here, tap on this keyframe, and then bring it out on the other side. So right here, it's perfectly in the right position. And now I can just move this straight up. That's great. And you know what? I also just want to scale that little tiny little bit like this. And then here it's going to fall out of the screen. Like this. So that is a little bit fast on the end. Let's move that out a little bit. Still a bit fast. Let's move this even further. All right, so now I see the problem. It's slowing down towards the end. So let's go back to this point and let's drag this a little bit further down. Or this is one way to do it, like here. I don't want it to slow down. What I can also change here is going inside and you can tap on here this keyframe timeline and keyframe track, hold down. And now you can set all easings too. This will actually set all the easings of the entire element. I don't want to do that, but I can expand and move scale. Now I can see all these different here elements. So this is the X axis. This is the Y axis. This is kind of like the scale. Like if you want to stretch it out, this is what it will change. Like here you can see 1.16. And if I go to this one, it's still 1.16. Um, but what I can do here is this is also where I can just set specific codes. Um, but what I can do is here tap on this one and then set easing of just this part to ease out or ease in. So it's slowing up and then speeding up. And I need to do this on two fronts. So not just one here, ease in. And so here it's doing this and then it's going fast down. And then for this point, I can actually now, let's collapse these again, collapse move. And let's move this one up a little bit here. 
This is great. So it's jumping up and then it's coming down. And pinch to out and whoop, perfect. So this looks great. Let me see just if I can actually move this keyframe a little bit further and done. So one thing to note as well is when you're playing back something, like if you're zoomed in just like this and you're playing back, you might have realized that you only see the playback of the version of the section that you have zoomed in right now. This is why sometimes you really need to zoom out again to see the entire section and to play it back. So we've added a beautiful movement. I can also keep on going on adding, for example, a little bit of shadow right here, but I want to show you something other just than keyframes. Um, so inside here, you can really much add, for example, here another track. So on this group here, this is where all my objects are. So for example, where I have the Pringles can, like the Pringles can works the same way, goes back and jumps out of the frame, great. Um, but what I can also do here, not just the Pringles can, but here add, for example, a, another track. And now I have a track on top. It will always stack it on top. And what I can do here is I want to move the whole video track here and then go down because I want to add, for example, a shadow uh, just underneath that. So here where it stops, this is a great place to position and create the shadow. So I can draw here with the tools that I have at my disposal. I can zoom in, this is not that great. So let's zoom in. And of course I have a couple of different objects right here. So that looks, that looks not too bad. Now I can just here, not with this one, but with a soft brush. So let's go into the brushes here inside here, airbrushes, soft blend. This is great. Maybe scale that up a little bit and then slightly array. So I don't want to have a very strong shadow. Maybe by holding down, you can actually select the same brush. So again, I have the soft brush here. See, this is not too much, but what I can do is let's get it all the way around. What I can do is here, let's go out of it, select this and I can just beautifully select because we don't have the transform tool we're used to in Procreate. Um, so to create that like this here, this is great. And so here it comes in nicely. And when it goes over, what would be cool is to have the shadow kind of move a little bit further. So instead here, so we have this position here where it starts to move. So let's add a move button here and another element right here. I think this is where it's all the way to the front and here it, it is back where it should be. And so now I can kind of like move this a little bit around. Interesting, it's not moving the same speed. Ah, oh, this is because of this here. So here, just needs to move a little bit. It's moving a little bit late. That might be due to the easing. Let's change the easing here. Set all easings to linear. Let's try this. And you can see it's, it's always a little bit of trial and error to see if you can get it all done. And then somehow here it's shifting back faster. But yeah, that's how you can play around with the shadow, add that if you want to or not. And of course, if you want to add a background color, so this is also one thing is now we can kind of like hide everything because we've grouped a couple of things. You have here an empty layer, so I can select, draw a color, for example, here with a color and just select and drop it outside. If I drop it inside of the frame, you will see here this inside of the stage, it will just be always on the stage. Now I can move that around. It's not gonna be that great, but you can also here select background color, select something if you want to, that will also change the entire color for the entire movie. Maybe something you want, maybe not, um, but that I leave that up to you. Let's see here, this is a great contrast, perfect. So let's play that back, nice. 
And one of the last things I want to do here, for example, the bottle is jumping out. Now, since I want to change this, let's go back in here, let's hide here the paprika, pepperoni um, piece. And as it's jumping out, what I want to do is I want to have a text introduction. Now, in a previous uh, animation challenge that I did, and this is something you can also learn from me here, I created, this is Procreate Open Now, and I'll just create a split view. So on this right side, you can see, I created this in Procreate before. So this is a beautiful text write-on effect in Procreate. And I created this before, and I, I kind of want to use this. So what I can do actually is now in gallery, there's a lot of like accessibility between these two to actually import something really easily. So like this here, importing, it should import all my friends that I have in here and put them together. So that might take a while because there are, I think, 35 or so images. And now do, done, and this should be a beautiful image and it has a great thing. Now it's playing back in a empty space and to adjust that, so you're kind of stuck with, oh no, my play frame is here done. What you can do is to tap on your project name file. So right now, this is Dream 3. I can tap on it here and I can go into the duration and change and adapt a lot of settings right here. So let's add like a couple of seconds. So 0, 06, 0, 06. There we go, 0, 06, done. And it has 15 frames per second, that's also great. So here, as it's jump out, it should write on, perfect, and then go out again. And so as we do this, And then say, as it comes in again, now we can cut here, for example, let's say at this part here, so at five seconds, let's cut this here, split, and I'll take the beginning here, and I'll bring it back to the beginning right here, and let's see, it jumps in, jumps out, and if I pinch back and zoom, you can see now we have two pieces together, and of course you can add more and more and more, and then create a lot of fun things. Again, adding shadows. If you have more time, you can play around with it a lot. And what I want to do finally before we end off, because this is your first animation in Procreate Dreams, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but I want also to show you how to export this animation. So let's go back to the, um, the movie uh, settings. So this is here, Dreams. And then what you can go into is share. In share, you have all these different options to share your video. Uh, video is the easiest method to do. So I will just click on video, export that. will go really quickly. It doesn't go that long normally. Um, right now it's stuck on 62%. And we're just going to wait until it's done. There's a chance that it crashed um, at a moment. I don't know. And I hope not. But somehow here... Export failed, let's try this again. Export here, boom, done. And let's go in here. This is where it will have saved it, save to video. You can also save it to files, anywhere you want to. Now, here we go, five seconds. And done. So it starts up. If you have a GIF, it would continue to play around and loop around, which is great. And so this is our very first quick animation using keyframes, importing things from Procreate. You can even import your brushes from Procreate. Simply open this up, like add Procreate on the side here by just dragging the app open. Open up Procreate in here, and you can just go into the brush library, either drag over any brush that you want. For example, this flat marker is great. I love this one, importing, it's in there now. And you can also just import entire brush sets. So not only just brushes, but all sorts. And you can import videos. You can add a video down here um, as well. So it's really great. You can import videos in here. Just drag and drop that. And you'll see there we now have even a video. So here, for example, if I want to have this switch around here to something else, whoop, have a beautiful animation. You can do this and this is the power of procreate dreams how you can create beautiful animation inside of procreate and i hope that this video was really helpful for you to get started if you want to learn more about how to use procreate dreams i got a full crash course for you it's being built out as we go on 
and uh, I love to show you all the things you can create with this, how you can animate on top of um, on top of film, how to create beautiful quick uh, transition, create frame by frame drawings, and all this stuff is going to be added to my Procreate Dreams. And right now for Black Friday, it's 50% off. You can get this deal right now. And even after Black Friday, it's still going to be a great deal. And you can learn with me inside of Teachable where I have a ton of resources, where I share all these project files as well. So you can get this project file that I just showed you at the beginning right here. You can get this and open it up inside of Procreate Dreams yourself and play around with it. See how you can really change all of this and create your own animation. I can't wait to see all the beautiful things you will create. Don't forget to also tag me inside uh, what you, whatever you create on Instagram or whatever platform you're using. And I can't wait to see all this beautiful creativity. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you hopefully soon in another video.